So what was the, the biggest problem I faced the first year of my home service business and how did I overcome it? Well, just being in business the first year is a big problem. <laughs> I have to overcome that. Uh, just, just getting in the ring as I call it. You know, probably, you know, the, I did have a huge problem that I, that I faced and I'm glad that it hit me the first year because it set me up and kind of point me in the right direction. But even just, I made a remark here about just starting your business. You know, I, I started my, my plumbing business you know, I already had, um, you know, we had had our home, mortgage, car payments, uh, three kids, three young young children, you know, that kind of thing. So when I started, you know, my, my plumbing business, you know, I had the concern of, of course, just trying to get customers, right? I mean, so, you know, that that's that's where the money comes from, all right? So I so I need customers, so I'm facing that, but I also had the concern of you know having healthcare and stuff for my kids, and so starting out, I mean, it was just it was just rough in the, in the sense that I was working all the time. I would, you know, I'm handing out flyers uh, during the day, um, hitting up businesses. You know, you, you're going after it. You know, when you start out, you know, the mindset is I just, I, I'll take anything. I'm just going whatever work I can get because I need to make money, right? So we're doing that. And then I'm also, you know, I got a, a second job and I was working at uh, UPS at night, throwing boxes literally from like 11 to three to four in the morning. So I'm, I'm working at uh, UPS, you know, um, shipping, throw, throwing boxes um, for um, healthcare for my kids. And basically, that's why, why I took that job. But it's still a physical job and, and at night. And so I'd work that job from 11 to 3. I, if I had a chance to work longer, I would because I you know, still needed some money. Okay. Um, but but keep, keep that job. I never worked longer than 4. And I'd come home, get a couple hours sleep. And then I'm in, in the truck here, you know, trying to, if I did get any kind of job, pick anything of I'm doing that. And I'm just out. Okay. In fact, the, the joke was that was even before we had cell phones. And... Uh, I, I would call, go to a payphone, and if it was rainy or something like that, you know, go to the payphone, and you know, I don't know if you remember payphones, but you know, it's just a little kind of sticky, and it's raining, and I kind of roll down my window and I pull the, the phone in, and you know, then I'm, you know, I'm trying to put money in, real, you know, a quarter in, and then calling home, all right, to the lovely Laura, can I come home? What? No, we we just got we just got a job that came in. You gotta you gotta go do it, you know, because we we need the money, right? And so that's really how the first year was. But the, the big problem issue that happened, of course, is I'm looking for, for any kind of work is what, what we do, right? And we want, want lots of work. Well, um, of course, we want service customers and all that, but it's hard, it's, you know, and that's where you want to be. But at, at the time, you know, it takes time to build that up. So what, what do we do? You know, we work new construction. So I get with a, a GC and, um, you know, now, now I, have, I have homes, right? So I did have work. And so that, that's the big problem that happened there. So I, and it's a mistake that, that many make. Uh, most most of us make is and it, it's it's a mistake in, in the sense that it's not the best way. You really can't grow a business that your business that way um, with um, GC accounts and commercial accounts that kind of thing. You can get work, um, which is what helps with that first year, just getting work, getting money coming in. Okay, but it also can become a trap. It, it also um, it can be uh, uh, it can wind up killing you. Okay, which it almost did. You know, my plumbing business because I'm working for this GC and it's going great. I'm thinking now, here we go. I'm in the money. In fact, I actually quit. Actually, we got in. Um, I was able to pick this GC up pretty quick in Indianapolis. There was uh, they were doing some. They were taking an old part of town and and uh, this whole whole neighborhoods, this whole section, and, and you know it was it was city and state money and federal money to come in, you know, to build new housing to uh, make more affordable housing and attract you know the younger folks down you know closer downtown or okay and, and to clean up these areas that become like a crack area and all that kind of stuff during that time and so i got with one of the gcs there that happened to be starting at that time um which was great i thought oh here we go and i got did a couple houses well the first house first house went really smooth i got paid on time everything you know seemed like you know was a go and i even quit my ups job because now i think i'm in the money well, then they start stringing you out. Okay, I get to the next house and then the money stops coming in. You know, um, I have to fight for my draw. Okay, and then the promise is, well, I need to have you, you know, we'll, get, we'll give you get these other houses. You know, I had, had houses lined up and, and it got me thinking, you know, I need to maybe hire someone. I did hire someone. But the, the problem was, you know, they started holding out the pay payments, right? You know, it's, 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 the, it's the, the builder thing. Okay, now I'm, I'm chasing my money and my... 
Um, supply house accounts are going up. They expect me to pay them, right? Okay, on time. Okay, but I'm not getting paid. And th this is happening and, and going on for that first year. Okay, this all happened within, within that first year. And finally, it got to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm about seven or eight houses in, okay? And, you know, feel, you know, think, thinking, I'm, thinking I'm there, but the money's not coming and I'm having to fight for the money. And I'm still kind of naive. I'm thinking, you know, no one says that they're just not going to pay you. And no one tells you, you know, this, this is the game that we play. We string you out, okay? That, you know, we, we string you out until you can't take it anymore. And then we just get someone else because guys that will take this kind of work are dime a dozen, which is true, by the way. And so I, I, I didn't realize that. I just got, started getting farther and farther behind. We didn't have, you know, again, the supply house was a thing. I'm starting to get calls. My first, within my first year, I'm getting calls from the supply house. You know, I'm, I'm running behind and I'm having to fight, fight them for the, for the draws. Um, we're getting the change orders. And, you know, of course I, I do the change orders because you don't, you don't want to tick them off because you don't want them to drop you, right? You know, so, so you're in that trap and I was in that trap. And finally, I just got to where I, I couldn't take it anymore. I, I, I couldn't, uh, supply houses on me. Uh, I was getting harder to even get supplies. Um, at this point, I was over, it was in the 70,000s. I was trying to stay on top of it. In fact, I was on top of the supply house more than I was on top of my own house. So my own personal bills, I'm getting behind. Um, you know, it's like, well, do I get, do I go back to try to get job back at UPS, you know, that kind of a thing, or, or can I even make it here? But finally, um, you know, I, I came to an end and I knew I uh, um, had a, you know, at our church, I had a attorney friend that was, was in, a, in a Sunday school class with. In fact, he happened to be a, a partner in one of the largest um, firms in Indy, which happened to be a business law firm, meaning they, you know, they represented businesses and did litigation like this kind of litigation and, and, and everything. And so that was a blessing there. And so they, they would take on, take on my case. And even though I got a little, you know, a little friendship discount or whatever, it's still expensive, okay? Um, you know, I quickly racked up close to $20,000 with, with the attorney, just like that, within, just within a couple months. I mean, go easily. And we haven't even gone to court. We haven't even done anything yet, okay? And that's when they came to me. You know, the reality is you, you go to court, you know, you can fight these things. And I had all the... I, I was covered, okay? So I had the contracts, all the contracts signed on the house, all the change orders signed. Um, I had all my, all my tests. I was in well at the city because we, you know, um, you know, had, had all the right inspections, I'd done everything by the book, right? All my, my I's were dotted, T's were crossed, all that kind of stuff, okay? Again, had the contracts, it's, it's all there. So I'm covered, right? All right? But we come to learn that it doesn't matter, okay? Because it's uh, at this point, you know, we go to court, you know, if things can string, can string out. So we're looking that it could be anywhere from fifty to $100,000 uh, to get to get my money. Now, at this time, you know, I'm, I'm over $70,000 that they owe you know, from the supply house. And I'm in the hundreds, 200000 in that area of, of money, too, OK, of, of total money. Well, I really can't afford to go to court. I can't afford the, the attorney fees. And then that's a lesson we learned pretty quick. Um, you know, I can't, I can't, turn, can't um, afford their attorney fees. So, you know, what can we do? Well, we can mediate. Okay. And so a mediate is where they bring in, you know, you just got, you know, you're in one room, you know, at a table and, and they're in another room in a table. And you just have an attorney going back and forth just saying, well, what will you give? What will you give? What will you give? Okay. Well, I decided to do that because that was cheaper. For the mediation, you know, it was like five grand or something like that. You know, you wind up paying for the, you know, it's, it's three to five grand, okay, for the attorneys and whatever, which is something that's a lot less than looking at 50 to 100 grand, right? So we did that. And I'm thinking, well, we got in, even the talking, our attorneys are, you know, feeling good about it because we, we got everything in line, okay? So we, we get there and I decided, you know, first of all, going into this, I was just going to sue the supply house. I just wanted the 70,000, you know, whatever that was. It was Seventy-four thousand dollars, something like that. Okay, I just want to get the supply house and good, good graces with the supply house, get them paid off and good graces there. So I thought I was being all fair, right? And good guy. And look, I'm not liking to take you, even though they're the ones taking me already. Okay, uh, I, just, I just want the seventy grand. Okay, and well, they came back and they countersued in at the mediation. I mean, so it wasn't like a suit, but they say, well, 
well, we want, um, we're suing you for a million dollars uh, because your test didn't get off or whatever, what, which is not true. I mean, it was, it was some bogus um, whatever. Uh, it's so hard to believe that anything like that can happen. But we see it today in our society today. If, you know, here in the U.S. with the whole, uh, you know, the Trump thing of, you know, tr Trump got indicted and, and is now, you know, a, a, a felon, you know, convicted felon over nothing. He didn't do anything wrong, but it's, it's how you can, you can just, you can just trump things up, right? Well, that, that's what, that's what happened, but it didn't matter. Okay. It, it doesn't matter. And this is kind of the lessons that you know, I learned through this as well, that it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, they, they counter you. We want a million dollars from you. Well, we, you've affected us. Okay. We've, we've lost a million dollars from what, I, whatever. Okay. And I'm going for my 70. So what happened was, and I didn't realize that until we're there. So I agreed to this setting and we're there. In fact, it was, it was uh, Christmas Eve. It was actually on Christmas Eve and it was actually kind of lightly snowing. And so everybody's just wanting to go home, right? Okay. And so we're, we're there and uh, they come back and I said, well, I want, you know, I just, I just want the, the 70, you know, whatever the supply house bills. I'm, I'm only going to get the other money you owe me on the house. I just want the, the, the materials, you know, the $74,000 or whatever it was. Okay. And that's what I was wanting from them. Well, they came back and said, well, we've lost a million dollars. And so what are you willing to give up of the 70,000? Um, you know, if, if you'll forgo the 70,000, we'll, we'll only want, um, you know, 750,000 from you. Is that's how it went back and forth. That's when I felt that, I mean, actually like, man, remembering and going back there actually gives me a little pit in my stomach, makes me a little sick. That's, that's the reality, okay? Um, keep in mind, I know I'm just kind of throwing up here on you, but I, I did, there was nothing wrong, there was nothing, we, we had, I had all the cards, I, had, I held all the aces supposedly. I mean, I was in the right, totally in the right, but it doesn't matter. That's a tough business lesson to learn. It doesn't matter, okay? And in fact, what really matters is who has the most money. That's who wins these kinds of things. And so it went back and forth like that. The bottom line, we came out of that, you know, I'm, I can remember, I'm thinking back, you know, I just, I remember sitting there just sick to my stomach and just almost want to cry, but you're not, you know, I'm not, not going to cry, but it's just, I just want to cry and just, okay. So we just went back and forth like that. The bottom line, they dropped their million dollars and agreed to pay me $1,300. So let me say that again. <laughs> they dropped their million dollars, okay? and agreed to pay me $1,300. Now that doesn't come close to even covering my supply house debt, let alone what I made on everything or what I own the attorney, right? And that was my, that's how I walked out of there that Christmas Eve with, uh, the, with a $1,300 check on the way. And that was my, the big thing I had to overcome my, my first year. You know, I still had the supply house debt. And so it set me up for that. I had to, you know, still had to, it took me it took me a year or so to work out of that, okay? Not to mention just the embarrassment, right? The, you know, just the uncomfortableness. I get to on fair. I want to do a fair business. I want everybody to win. I want to pay my bills, right? I want, I want to take care of you, do a good job for you. If I don't do a good job, we'll, you know, redo it. What, you know what I'm saying? It's just, that, that, that's the mindset. But I, I'm thankful that I learned those lessons that first year. That happened the first year. Um, that came close to knocking me out or, or even just the idea of just quitting. I said, this is, I don't want to deal with this. Um, it was totally unfair, but that's how it is. That's the reality. You know, I, I came out of that experience, um, you know, just realizing that first of all, contracts, contracts are a qualifier. They're not, um, you know, you, they're, they're, they're not written in stone. Okay. <laughs> all right. You can say I have a contract, you know, I'm thinking back, you know, historically, you know, it's like when, when Chamberlain, Lord Chamberlain, the prime minister for Great Britain, um, England during the World War II, you know, met with Hitler, you know, and came back with a, there's a famous picture or whatever that he got a letter, a signed letter saying that Hitler is not going to attack anyone or whatever. See, we got it. We got a contract. All right. It doesn't mean anything. OK. And the same thing goes with your contracts, with, with these contracts. They're, they're a qualifier. And the ones that win them, okay, under the disputes, first of all, the only one that wins on any dispute is the attorneys, okay? The attorneys are the only ones that make money, all right? And then it's, it's the one that, that wins, and no one quite wins, okay? But the one that comes out the best is the one that has the most money. That's the power, okay, with that. And that's the lesson I learned through that. Um, 
through, through that whole experience. And I'm glad that it happened my first year. Look, I wouldn't want to go through it again. And even just we're talking about it, I feel that pit in my stomach and that, that realization. Um, but that, that set me up to, to realize that, um, you know, the reality of, of those kinds of things. It also pushed me towards, that's the time when I said, you got to be done with GCs, you know, doing general contract work and that kind of a thing. Now, I didn't quite learn a lesson because even though, because I'm still, still in that position, you don't have a lot of, um, you know, you haven't, the systems in place didn't realize how to do that yet. And you're still learning how do I attract customers. Okay, so you have plenty of customers. You don't have to depend on that. Um, by the way, houses, having lots of houses and lots of customers aren't the same thing. Okay, so having a, one guy, just like I have with, we have a lot of houses. Okay, you really only have one customer. And so, you know, if that one customer takes you, they can take you. Where if you have lots of customers, that's what, why service is so beautiful. Yeah, you're going to get a bad customer here and there. Okay, but just having that one, and you have all the others, okay, that, that more than cover, right? So that's, that's a lesson I learned out of that. So it really, uh, um, in that first year, it, it hit me, um, you know, do I really want to do this? Okay, I survived that. It was pretty big, even just talking about it here, and, even, you know, you know, 70, that supply house bill, $74,000. I did, I, how am I ever going to pay that? I mean, I had no, you know, looking that back now and where we're at now, it seems like I could come up with, I mean, we do, right? But back then it was like, they're going to, my children are going to be enslaved to them forever. You know, it was the first time coming up against that kind of a thing, right? So there was a lot of fear with that, but I survived that, right? And then I learned that a lesson, a, a reality lesson that um, the contracts don't mean anything. Still do, we still do them. Again, I, I call it a, a qualifier. It's like, okay, we have something, you know, these are guidelines, what we're doing here. But the reality is contracts don't mean a thing. And on any dispute, coming out of any dispute, the one that wins or one that has the upper hand is the one that has the most money, period. Okay, and that's what I, you know, I learned out of that. And I'm, I'm glad I had that that uh, situation or that uh, that huge problem hit me in the within my first year um, instead of later um, because again it set my shoulders taught me an important lesson and um, I survived and went on from there to to eventually thrive all right so that's not that's the biggest issue that I had to face in, in my in, in my plumbing business my home service business the first year and quite frankly I hear a lot of very similar stories okay uh, if you take something from this I hope you can take that look it's, it's, a, it's a, a bump in the road. It may be a big bump in your road, but it's just a bump. It's a bump you can get over, okay? You just gotta see it through and, um, and not, uh, not panic and not, <laughs> not get totally frustrated where you just throw in the towel, okay? Um, but it's just how it is, all right? So there you go. That was my thing, okay?